I have some really cool cyanobacteria that looks like green algae. I grab a chunk of it. What I want to do with this sample now is actually get the smallest thread possible. In this case, I'm going to use a few different things. I have a razor, just be very careful with it. I also have tweezers in case I need them. Um, some of these threads like to smoosh together. It's okay if you don't know if it's a cyanobacteria or a green algae. There's also different kinds of algae, like red algae. That's what we're going to find out with the microscope. Um, and I also have a clean uh, plastic pipette, which I will use to transfer. Use the tweezers if you have a larger chunk, uh, or you could use your pipette. What we want to do is transfer the smallest amount we can into a clean surface that we can cut on. Okay, so I'm using this lid right now um, just because it's very resistant. And let's see if I can pull out some completely fine to chop this up as much as you can. Remember that. Most of these algae that we see here are actually a lot of microorganisms coming together as a community, which is why it looks like it is just one thing. And actually, if you are to grow them in a glass container, they like to stick to glass. That's something I've learned. Okay. So I have a, I'm going to get a little bit more than what I just grabbed. Let's go ahead and. I first grab a drop containing a little bit of my sample and then I grab a chunk. It's actually great because I wanted to show you that this is why we have this extra water for. Sometimes it's harder to break up these chunks when it's a little dry. So I'm going to grab some of this clean water. Then I'm going to mix it. There you go. Just a teeny tiny. Enough for it to be wet. Now I'm going to proceed with my razor blade. You can use a knife here. You can actually use a spoon, anything uh, that will just allow you to literally chop it up softly. And you will see how different little pieces start to go into the water. That's why the water is also useful because then they have more freedom to move around and it's easier to isolate them. So let's see if you can see here in my video, you see this? teeny tiny parts, that's what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a new clean drop of water, put it somewhere on the side so it doesn't touch the original one, and then try to grab that teeny tiny amount. I did a good job here. So you can see here, I grab just a teeny tiny amount and I'm gonna put it into the new drop. There you go. Oh, it got stuck. There you go. You can see it here, teeny tiny. So now this is almost ready, but you wanna chop that up even more. Uh, here it's literally one fifth of a grain rice. I want it smaller. I want it to the point that I can barely follow it with my eyes that I see a little of a green shade there. That's as small as I want it because as I told you, these are a community. So under the scope, if you have too much of it, you actually will just see a blurb. You won't be able to distinguish the shapes and all the beautiful colors that these organisms have. So I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit more. And let's see if this shows up. It was one little chunk and now it's a little small, a lot of small chunks. I want to grab some of one of these small chunks. There you go. Into my last new drop. And now I will go ahead and transfer into my slide. So you can just use the same water. Just try to grab one if you can only. And there you go. Perfect. Now from here, you can go ahead and just cover it with the, with the, the little lid or uh, you could try to chop it up even a little bit more, but it starts to get a little bit more difficult. So we can see how it looks under the scope. In science, often we need to pivot in the moment, in the spot. So put the cover, see how it looks. Perhaps we already have a few teeny tiny of these floating in the water and you can really visualize them. Uh, because it's going to be really hard to see an individual 
cyanobacteria instead of the community. What you can do is you can lift the cover and try to chop it up a little bit more and transfer into a new drop. And that's why I like to start at the edge of my um, slide. So then I have space to still go a few more times.